You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. Welcome back, everyone, to more of the Greeks Gridiron. I am Ethan Hrsadulu, and today, March 29th, 2022, I'm continuing on with my On the Clock series where we preview each and every single team in the NFL, going through some draft needs and players I'd like to see them target. We'll talk a day three pick, a day two pick, and then lead off and finish with the first round selection I would like to see each team go by. And we are doing today the Baltimore Ravens. So my Ravens fans, comment down below. Let me know who you want to see the Ravens target in this year's draft. And also, if you agree with some of the picks I have, leave a like and then Also, hit that subscribe button if you're interested in what some other teams are doing. I'm running this series all the way up until the NFL draft. So, without further ado, let's talk some Baltimore Ravens. So, the team needs, needs, excuse me, that I've identified for this team are going to be linebacker, offensive line, and interior defensive lineman. I think one of the more glaring things that is sticking out to me here is going to be the left side of the offensive line. If the injury issues with Ronnie Stanley continue with the Ravens, it's been a pretty rocky couple of years with him, just injury wise and not being able to get healthy. He came in pretty much for the first week or so last season and then was gone from injury the entire year dealing with that ankle and things have just not really gotten well. So hopefully he heals up. He's good to go for this next season. However, my day three pick has to do with the offensive line, and it's going to be Luke Godecki out of Central Michigan, the offensive tackle there. Now, from what I've read about him, it sounds like some people believe he might end up being a guard in the NFL anyways. So you're bringing in Godecki to to basically insurance for tackle, but also if you don't need him for tackle, he's a guy that you're probably going to slide inside and play at the guard position. Now, Whether he ends up on the left or right side, you know, I'll let the Ravens decide that. But this is a good insurance policy, and you're not spending a really high draft pick, as I do have him selected as a day three guy from everywhere I've read. It seems he's somewhere in that day three range. He might sneak into the day two, but it sounds like he's going to be a rounds four, five, six, and seven guy. So this would be an excellent excellent kind of depth piece and insurance policy should things kind of you know, go south with what's going on with Ronnie Stanley there. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable to me that, you know, he's missed so much time. I remember when the Ravens brought him in and and I feel like he has not been able to play since. So we'll have to see what happens with him, but Godecki's an outstanding run blocker. One of the best in the draft, actually, when you look at the grading that PFF gave him and he's not really a slouch in passing sets either. He's not the best, but he's not the worst. He's pretty solid there. The guy has an excellent frame at 6'5", 310 pounds, a great sized offensive lineman, and a lot of people seem to praise him for his awareness and his ability to to not allow any of those like defensive trickery schemes on the D-line to, to really fool him. He, he knows what he's doing. He sticks to his assignments, and he's very good at that. Now, there are a couple of cons out there. One thing that I've seen a lot of people talk about is the length of him overall. While he is a big-sized dude, not the longest arms that you'd want to see from a guy, especially if he did end up playing the tackle position, you want someone that's going to be able to reach out there and grab those edge rushers. Not grab, not hold, but, you know hold off on those edge rushers that are moving on the outside there. Won't be as big of an issue if he ends up being a guard, I would say, but it is something that people are looking at. And also from what it sounds like, like I said, he's not the best pass protector. He's also not the worst, but some people seem to criticize his ability to kind of flip his hips open and get to the outside quickly enough, which is why some people believe he's going to be a guard as opposed to a tackle in the NFL. But With all that projection of him potentially swapping to guard, I guess another con would just be that his progression might get slowed if he does have to move over to the guard position. So again, he's an insurance policy guy. Do they necessarily need to grab him? Probably not, but there's four rounds in day three. This is just one guy that I think would be someone worth them bringing in should he be available to them in those later rounds. Now, the second 
pick that I'm going to go over here for day number two. It's going to have to do with the interior defensive line. And the Ravens have a really solid group altogether in terms of their front seven. But the interior D-line could definitely use a little bit of work, especially when you're relying on Derek Wolf, who did not play last season. And his better years are pretty much behind him at this point as being one of your starters. You'll want to start to look for some people to maybe replace him and eventually slot into that starting role there on the right side of the D-line. Now, a guy from Oklahoma like Perry and Winfrey, excuse me, Winfrey, whoa, would be an excellent guy to bring in on a day two pick. Very explosive. He gets off the snap quickly. He had six sacks in 2021. Pretty effective guy. And he comes from a big school. He's played against some pretty solid talent on the offensive line. He's a really good athlete. And, he, and uh, what I noticed when I was reading about him is that a lot of people praise him for his ability to go laterally, sideline to sideline, side with some pretty notable running backs in the uh, college ranks. And he also has some really good length with long arms. So he's a big guy. He's able to reach around, you know, really good athleticism, someone that moves a little bit quicker for his size. And really the knocks that come towards him is mainly just like the disappearing where, you know, he has some games where he just kind of, you know, you can't really find him on tape. He's not standing out. So maybe motor issues, consistency issues. And I've also seen some people say that his legs are not quite as big as you'd want for somebody that's playing on the interior like that, especially if he's going to a three, four scheme like the Ravens, you want to have, you want to have a guy that's pretty solid base and, and, and a thicker sort of dude playing that DN position. But I think he can put on some weight, work on that leg strength and size and make up for that. So not really, a, a serious con and something that would I think that the Ravens would shy away from taking him I think he'd be an excellent guy again coming from a big school he's played against some pretty solid talent and he's an athlete and I feel like he would fit well with what Baltimore does over there defensively and again like I said you have Derek Wolf there you can't keep relying on him at this point it again missed all of last season we'll have to see what they end up doing there but I do like Perry and Winfrey as a day two guy if you're snagging him in like the third round I think that would be an excellent time to grab him should he be available now for the first round selection and this one I want to really get into here because I think that this one is kind of a no-brainer but I've seen a lot of people not look at this position and I'm curious as to why and how I mentioned that linebacker is a position of need, and it's clear the Ravens have even thought that because one, they tried to bring in Devondre Campbell. That didn't work out. Obviously, now he's going to the Minnesota Vikings, and there's rumors now swirling that they are looking at trying to bring in standout all-pro linebacker and former Seahawk Bobby Wagner. It's clear to me that the Ravens know they need to add another piece of the linebacking core, and honestly... If I was to take somebody in the first round and based off of the projections and mock drafts that I've looked at, Devin Lloyd, linebacker out of Utah, dude is the all around linebacker that you would want to take a guy that I think the Ravens would covet if they could grab him at that spot. I believe the number 15 spot is where they're drafting. This is a guy that makes sense to me. I've, I've seen, you know, offensive linemen and a few other things, but it's clear the Ravens know they need to get a linebacker in that corpse. They were willing to pay big money for, for one guy, and there's rumors that they're willing to pay, from what it sounds like Bobby Wagner wants, like a one-year $11 million deal. They're willing to pay big money for someone like Bobby Wagner as well. Uh, there's like reports that they've put in a competitive offer for him, and Bobby Wagner's just kind of taking his time going through his choices and whatnot. Devin Lloyd fits the bill. The dude's a freak athlete, 6'3", 235 pounds, excellent situational awareness. Uh, you know, nobody really, he doesn't really get caught by fakes. I, I mean, the guy is it, it, the all around linebacker that coming with size and some pretty solid speed for his size is kind of like the do it all guy that I think, you know, with versatility the Ravens would covet and want to bring in. There are some cons to his game that I've read about. Tendency uh, with missing tackles is an issue there. He had a career 12.5% miss rate, so that's definitely something he needs to work on. But if there's one thing that I think Baltimore is really good at developing, it is developing really good disciplined linebackers. So maybe there's just something that, you know, he needs a little bit of correcting and coaching up on that I definitely could see coming from the Ravens. They brought in linebacker Zachary Orr to be their linebackers coach if someone could get that out of him I would I would say Zachary Orr would probably be the guy 
Um, up uh, on top of that, there is like some issues with his motor. I, I, he's gassed out at a lot of games late, and he's not necessarily like the elite athletic linebacker that we're seeing in today's game. When you look at like Fred Warner, Darius Leonard, those guys, he's not necessarily that freak athlete, but he's still very athletic for his size. I, I think he he's a very do it all inside the three four build kind of linebacker that you could bring in, and he could do a lot with and when you look at what Baltimore does defensively and how well they develop their linebackers, if Devin Lloyd's going to Baltimore, I see him having a very good career and a long one at that. And he ends up becoming a stalwart in the center of that defense. So I definitely think that Devin Lloyd would be an excellent selection for the Ravens to take in that first round. Those are my three picks for the Ravens in this year's draft. I would love to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. My Ravens fans, let me know. And again, hit that like button, hit that sub button, and I will see you guys next time. Appreciate you all for watching. Have a good one.